when we create our class files, it's important that we maintain control over the data. And what I mean by that is making sure that we have control over the values that get assigned to our member variables. And in this case, type, color, weight, height, etc. We've used the private modifier, the private access modifier on these member variables, which essentially means that we cannot set them directly from within code. So in other words, if we go to our program.cs file, which is the main entry for our code execution on this console application, and we create an animal, dog is an example, so we're going to create a new instance of an animal called dog. We want it to assign something to the dog. So if we said dog, you know, dot age, it's not available. So we can't make any kind of changes to dog in terms of the member variables because they're declared as private. Again, it's very important for us to do that so that we can control the values that get assigned or get sent into these member variables. We don't want a negative value being sent into age. Uh, we don't want an outrageous number of legs assigned, although we could create an animal for a, you know, a millipede, which has X number of legs. Again, we wouldn't want negative values here. Likewise, for color, we wouldn't want just any arbitrary value. We would want, obviously, you know, legal types of colors that you would have. So the way that you control that is by creating these member variables with the private access modifier and then creating something known as properties. Now, you can also refer to these as accessor methods. They're referred to as properties. Some also refer to them as getters and setters because that's essentially what we're doing with it. So what we're going to do is create some public properties which help us to encapsulate these fields. So encapsulation basically means to hide implementation. If you think about the stereo system in your car, you don't have to understand electronics to be able to operate it. You push a button to turn it on, you rotate a knob to adjust the volume, and you press buttons to get the presets, etc. The stereo itself encapsulates the functionality of those controls within the electronics of the system. And you don't need to understand how it works. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, you don't need to worry about how far you can rotate the knob to turn the volume up. It's all handled internally. With our animal class, we want similar control. So we want to encapsulate the attributes within our class so that we can control the interface for this class, if you will, and what users can assign to it. So in this case, we'll create a few properties so we can see examples of how to encapsulate these member variables and allow users to set the values and to get the values uh, back from them. So let's focus on perhaps maybe setting up uh, color and age as an example. So we'll encapsulate those two values just to give you an idea of how to do that. So because of the fact that we want these to be accessible, we have to use the public access modifier. So we will create the public access modifier. Now, let's focus on age first. And because we are going to be able to return the value for age, this public property also has to have a return value. So we will say int. And a strictly coded convention, this is not required, uh, but it does make your code much easier to read and maintain. Coding convention states that whatever the member variable is, we use that for the property, but we use it with a initial capital letter. So our member variable is lowercase a for age. Our property will be uppercase a for age. All right? So public int age, and then we are going to surround this property, like a lot of our C-sharp constructs, with the curly braces. Now inside this, we want to be able to get or return the age value. So we will create this variable or this method, if you will, called get. And within the get, we are going to return the age. Now, the thing that some programmers prefer to do, it's a shortcut to just simply put in age and say, that's good, I'm happy, I'm done with this, I don't have to worry about anything anymore, um, and it works perfectly fine. And it does. But because of the fact that we're dealing with instance variables, some programmers prefer to use this.age. Now, the keyword this is used to mean me or my instance or this specific instance. It's just a way of saying that we are definitely returning this.age and not the age of something else. Again, it could be arbitrary, it could be meaningless, but it depends on how you're getting into your inheritance hierarchy for classes. Uh, we'll talk about inheritance later. This keyword becomes very important. 
Now we have a way of returning the value so users of our class can get the age value. What if they want to set the age value? Well, you guessed the keyword is probably going to be set, and it is. So we're going to set the value. And then we can say, again, this dot age equals. Now C Sharp also includes this special keyword called value. And value is used in public properties to indicate the incident of the value that is being passed in by the user of our code. So again, it's just a keyword that we use to get that information brought into the int uh, or into the age variable for the property. Let's go ahead and create one more public. And in this case, we said we want it to focus on maybe color. So we'll say public string. Um, and again, using the coding convention of the uppercase color. And we will go ahead and create the curly braces. We will set up our get. And we will return this.age, semicolon to end it, and then set. says that we will set this dot. Actually, I made a coding mistake. We'll fix that in just a minute. This dot color uh, equals value. And you remember how I told you the preferred coding environment is Visual Studio. And this is why, because sometimes it saves us from ourselves. It tells us this is the type safe feature of C Sharp coming in saying, hey, you're trying to assign a string value to an integer value. And guess what? That doesn't work. So let's put the proper variable in here, which is this dot color. So now we've encapsulated these two. We know that if we step out to program.cs, we can now say dog dot, and you'll see, oh, lo and behold, age and color have now become available to us because of these public properties. So dog dot age equals minus 12. And then we're happy with that, but wait a minute, now we're not happy with that because we shouldn't be able to assign a minus 12. So the next part of the encapsulation or the aspect that we need to focus on is in the set value, providing some kind of logic within here that says, well, let's double check what's coming in. One of the things that you'll learn very quickly as you start coding and programming is never trust user input. Never, ever trust user input. So how do we fix that? Well, let's go ahead and make this look a little more like a function by separating and putting everything on separate lines. And it just makes things a little bit easier when we start adding multiple lines of code. So we're going to put in one of our if statements. And we're going to say if value is less than zero, all right, we can allow for zero because maybe we've got a puppy. And, you know, the puppy was just brand new born, so they're not a year old yet. We can say zero is fine. But if it's less than zero, that's not a valid age. We can't have a negative value. So we'll say if value is less than zero, we will output a message, console.writeLine, age cannot be less than zero. And of course, users of your code may choose to ignore that if they wish, but we've at least put it in there. And then we can also build in an else structure that says, all right, so if it's not less than zero, let us go ahead and assign that value to the age dot value. So all we're doing here is we're just simply putting some logic into our code that says, I want to check to make sure that I'm getting some kind of a valid value for the age. If it's less than zero, I'll output an error message. If it's not, then let's assign it to the value itself. Let's go ahead and leave our negative 12 in here as an example and execute the code. And oh, look, it says age cannot be less than zero. Well, okay, and it shouldn't be, so we've created an error message for the user. Now, there's other ways of handling this. We would create exceptions and we would, you know, handle the code. We would step back out, make sure it didn't get assigned appropriately, et cetera, et cetera. But for this case, let's just go ahead and assume that we're going to create a new dog with an age of two. And then to verify that it actually worked, let's do console.writeLine and dog.age. And this will actually invoke the get method, which will return that information for us and then output it to the console. If we do control F5, the dog's age is two, so we know that that worked fine. So there we have it, just a quick example of encapsulation. So we have created our member variables to be of type private, so they are a private access modifier. Sorry, not of type, they are different data types here. The access modifier is private, so that we can't set them directly. We've created public properties to access 
and to set the values. And just for the age one, we've given you a demonstration of building in some kind of logic that says this is how we can control the values being passed in by the user before allowing them to set those values directly.